What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for joining us on Robert Garcia Unfiltered. We had a big weekend of uh, fights for, for RGBA. Um, we're going to get into, obviously, BAM's big win over Carlos Cuadras. It becomes your 14th world champ. 14th world champ. 14, yes. Moved up, like, like we talked about last week, where he moved up um, two, two weight classes on six day notice, we're going to talk about, you know, what, what happened when he got the call, you know, how, what went into that decision. And obviously that the fight itself, we also had Mario Barrios versus Keith Thurman. We'll get into the card a, a little bit. Um, and then a few, a few, a few uh, of the boxing news that, that, that I read online was um, we'll start off with, uh, with Oscar Valdez. It looks like his manager, Frank Espinosa came out and said, that they have agreed to the fight against Shakur Stevenson. They're just waiting on Shakur Stevenson to sign the fight. Um, so it looks like that's that's getting finalized for April 30th. Um, so that that that's that. But besides that, there wasn't too much, you know, too much news last week that, that we were going to get into, just the fights. We'll start with the pay-per-view, uh, Show Fox or Showtime pay-per-view. I don't even know how to order it. Um, between Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios on the undercard, Leo, Leo Santa Cruz versus Keenan Carbajal. We had, um, was Josito's opponent Abel or Jesus? Abel, right? Abel, I believe Abel so. Abel Ramos loses with a um, last-minute replacement. He was supposed to be fighting Josito Lopez. Uh, his, his uh, I think his brother, uncle, whatever, relative, Jesus his, Ramos. His brother, I think he, he, he won, right? He won. Um, and we had Luis Neri picking up a split decision over... Carlos Castro. That's the only. That's the only one that I didn't see much of. I didn't see anything of really. I didn't see that fight. Um, I read online that the scorecards were a little bit uh, closer than they should have been. That Neddy kind of, you know, he won uh, more convincingly. But um, again, I didn't. I didn't see that one. I don't know if you saw that one. Um, I, I didn't get to see much of it. But uh, knowing, knowing, uh, honestly, I, I, I was thinking, uh, Neddy. You know, from what we've heard and what we've been told by very close people to him that his discipline is not the best, that he, you know, that he likes to hang around and do things that he's not supposed to. So I was actually uh, giving his opponent a chance because he's a good little boxer. I've known him, I've seen him fight, and I knew he was going to be in great shape. You know, Manny Robles always has his fighters in great shape. So I thought, um, you know, a, a very well-prepared Neddy is always going to be dangerous to anybody. You know, at 118, 122, he's, he's solid. He's a solid uh, fighter. But uh, from what, you know, the, the discipline problems, the hanging around with crowds that he's not supposed to, stuff like that, that we've heard, you know, I cannot confirm it, which is stuff that I've heard. I thought Acasto had a really good chance, but, uh, you know, Nelly, it looks like Nelly came, went out of the fight, you know, it was a split decision, but yeah, I, w I also was told that, that the judges scored it too close, but, uh, but you know, good win for Nelly, man, you know, he, you know, he is. He moved up to 122. Huh? He moved up to 122 pounds for this fight. Yeah, and, you know, he is a great fighter. He, he, you know, coming a, a couple of years ago, a lot of people were, were talking about him as, as could be the next great Mexican champion because he, he does look great. You know, he, he is a very talented, he has tremendous power. But, uh, like, it happens to a lot of young fighters where they, they pick the, grand, the, the, the wrong crowds. They, they get too comfortable. That's, that's another main thing. They get too comfortable with, 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 with good paydays and stuff. Uh, people around them that, that instead of making them work or, or, or motivating to work, are there hanging around and, and just living, living, living a life. And that's not good. With, with Nettie, you just said like he's had a, good wins and, and but every single time he he's had a good win there's always something behind it it's, it's not like like you said he's one of those guys that's had a lot of talent yes but all the problems that he's had he's brought it on himself he he is um like you said he's had good good knockouts but on a lot of those fights on a lot of his big fights he'll test positive for something he'll miss weight um he's all the problems that he has are just him um just you know his his career has been stalled and he's taken a, a, a lot of steps back, but, but they've all been his fault. Like nothing, nothing is, 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 has actually been like in terms of his skills or, or cause he has the skills to be, to be a really, really good fighter. Yeah. But again, tested positive for, for, for banned substances, um, missed weight several times. So um, that's, you know, he's kind well, of, I think that's when, I think that's when, I, when, when, you know, 
when you know what, what I'm saying. He got too comfortable. He thinks it, it's going to be so easy for him. And uh, and look, it happened to him as a world champion, where he already became a world champion. He already he he everybody was already seeing him as as a as, as a future superstar from Mexico. Uh, we've talked about this many many times. How many times? Does that happen to young fighters? As soon as they sign a contract with a promoter, the promoter starts giving them money and attention, and 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 they start, you know, start getting friends them. around them that that, that we have. That they didn't have we have those in my gym. We have those in our gym, and there's nothing we can do. We could tell them and scream at them and 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 force them to do it in the gym. But when they're at home, when they're on their own, they sneak out to the fucking gas station and and buy chips and 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 and, and candy bars. You know, that's just there's nothing we can do you know it's just the way it is uh once when a fighter is hungry to be great it doesn't matter if the promoter gives them money every month gives them a big signing bonus they're fucking hungry they want to be great they want to they're pushing themselves to be great we've had we have those in the gym too we have those in the gym we see it with many fighters but there's, there's also those that get too comfortable and at the end the careers go down the hill. They don't do nothing. Uh, Ten years later, they become drunks. They become drug addicts, or they're working regular job at you know at a warehouse. You know that's just the way it is. You know, Nettie, Nettie had potential being uh, another great Mexican champion, but you know, good thing is he did make it to the title fights. He did become champion. Maybe it happened once he became champion. You know where he i'm pretty sure he, he already did good with with some money back home and stuff like that a lot of young fighters never even get to that point yeah um like i said it was his first fight at 122 i think i i heard him after the fight mention that he would like to fight um a, a, a fight at a catch well not a catch weight but meet um gallo strada at 118 pounds that would be like one of a fight that he would like but again that would mean he would have to get back down to 118 pounds which he, he struggled to make he's missed weight like i said numerous times so we'll see what he does right the other the other like i said uh jesus jesus ramos picked up a win abel ramos actually lost with the last minute replacing him and that's who josito was gonna fight again josito had an injury before the uh, week a few weeks before the fight that he had to pull out of the fight then we go to leo santa cruz versus Kenny carbohol not much to talk about there leo santa cruz again another another i don't know al Heyman tune-up you know he's out he's one of al Heyman's. He's one of Al Heyman's favorite fighters. Just wins a, a decision, a hundred to ninety on all three scorecards. Not not much to talk about. The only thing was that that fight was at one hundred and thirty pounds. Leo Santa Cruz is a world champ at one hundred and twenty six pounds. Keenan Carbajal fights at one hundred and twenty six pounds. I don't know why Leo wouldn't go down to one twenty six to defend the title that he's had for three years that he hasn't defended. Um, but again, he's still champion at 126? Still has the WBA championship at 126. Oh, I didn't know that. But hey, look, it's, it's, it's a good good comeback fight for Leo. You know, he got, Again, one of, he of, got knocked one out of Al Heyman's in his last fight. So, so there's one always of, that. Okay, but even before that, even before he got knocked out cold, he's just one of Al Heyman's favorites. He's just one of Al Heyman's yeah, favorites. So what, and he's going to fight at whatever way he wants. He's going to have hold the title just like Gary Russell did for years um, and not even defend it. Um, and just you know, he gets the the the, the special well, that's, that's, from the, from the that's, WBA that's and from Al Heyman. That's what boxing is. We know that that's just the way the way boxing works. And right now they're getting that. If, if we're in that position with one of our fighters, we're gonna be okay with it too. If they're getting paid millions of dollars and they only have to fight once a year, or maybe once every two years, and not 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 forced to defend their, their titles, maybe maybe we could maybe we'll be happy no, too. You know what I mean? No, just the way boxing is right now. We were, we the way were, boxing no. works. Why? Well, yeah, it's what's well, fucking. It's the way boxing works, and uh, the way it should be. Know, Leo's a great kid. Leo's a we great got guys. Person. We got guys that 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 um, Michael Conlon, Laywood, all these guys that are fighting for for these titles, staying busy and stuff. And guys like Gary Russell, guys like Leo Santa Cruz, just hold a title without even defending it for years and stuff. When there's guys coming up that sh that should be getting those opportunities, um, I mean, you say it's, it's the way it works. That's the way boxing is right now. That's fucking. But yeah, but you the know. WBA, okay, but the thing is that that's not the way boxing works right now because the WBA is taking interim titles away. They're they're forcing certain guys to fight certain guys, but 
when it comes to when it comes to the WBC with 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 Gary Russell, oh, okay, it's okay for him not to fight for a year and a half and defend the title. When it comes to Leo Sandergrill, it's okay if he never fights at featherweight, you know, in three years, two two and a half years, however however long it was. For them, it's okay. But for other guys, other guys get titles taken away. Other guys have mandatories that they have to do. Some of the mandatories, even some of the mandatories, they don't even enforce them like like the way they Most should. Like, like, exactly. So so you you know it's the way boxing is, but it, it it's terrible. But whatever. It's you know again, it was a boring a boring uh, fight. There was really. No, I'm still, I'm still happy about. for Leo. He's a great kid, great person, great family man, and uh, and you know I'm happy for him you because know, he he came back after you know, a lot of people thought he was going to retire. There was a lot of talk about him retiring came back and uh you know they had to pick the right fight the right opponent and yeah maybe i didn't i didn't, I didn't get to see much of the fight but yeah it was boring and went all you know uh all, all you know the, the distance but uh but you know he's back now you know he'll get a bigger fight after then we move to the main event keith thurman versus mario barrios pretty one-sided keith thurman just too big and strong for mario barrios i believe Barrios, we, we thought him going up to 140. I think we both picked him. Uh, we know Mario Barrios. He's a, he's, you know, he was in, uh, when we go to uh, to the snack uh, facilities with Mikey and stuff, he's been there a few times while we're there. Just a really cool guy. We've known him, you know, he's from San Antonio, like like Tanahara, Bam, and Josh, and all these guys. So we've seen him, you know, for, we've known about him for a long time. We've known him. Um, but just, you know, we thought him going up in weight, maybe it, it would benefit him, but he just wasn't, you know, strong enough to keep, Key, uh, to to uh, really do anything to Keith Thurman, um, but Keith Thurman, you know, picks up the win. What what would you like Keith Thurman? What would you like to see from Keith Thurman? Because again, even though you know Mario Barrios is a good is a good fighter, I don't think he's one of the top welterweights. Obviously, he showed that. Um, Keith Thurman, it was his first fight back in, in in a few years. Do you think it would be it would be like it would be okay for him to 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 basically wait for the winner of Errol Spence versus Jordanis Ugas because it looks like that's going to get announced. Uh, soon for I, I believe it, I read uh, April. Do you think he should be he should be the one uh, you know to wait? Do you think he should fight Terence Crawford? Maybe um, uh, Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis actually has an IBF title eliminator coming up, so if he wins, he's actually going to be one of the mandatories for 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 Errol Spence. Uh, what do you think Keith Thurman should do next, and what do you think he will actually do next? Well, I think I think Keith Thurman looked good. I think he uh, he he did better than than a lot of a lot of us expected. You know, we had some some interviews with different coaches and and most of us picked uh barrios because you know barrios is young coming off uh coming off a loss that were but a fight that he fought his heart out of it you know and, and fought to the end got stopped by by a great fighter and you know in, in uh in tank but uh but uh but you know this you know keith thurman came in good he, he fought smart and well and strong and and look really good i think you know i was thinking you know he's been out for for over two years uh being you know losing to pacquiao a 40 year old getting dropped and and you know he before the fight he was talking too much uh, i thought i thought it was uh, uh he wasn't going to be the same anymore but he came he came in better than i expect he came better than i expected he performed and and did what he had to do you know won the fight you know very, very good. Look really good. Very strong. So I think he, I think he's ready for, I think, I think he, he should wait for, for one of those big fights, uh, big, uh, big names, you know, the winner of, you know, like you said, the winner of Spence and the Ugas, or just go straight into a Crawford fight. If, if, if he gets that opportunity, I think he, the, I think it'll be a big fight for Crawford. It'll be a big fight for the winner of Ugas and Spence. Uh, I think uh, Keith Thurman, Showed that he's up there at the welterweight division again, you know, like like he was a few years back. I would like to see him fight Terence Crawford, just because I would like to see the beating that Terence Crawford would give Keith Thurman. Um, but he keeps he keeps during the whole week they kept bringing up uh, Errol Spence and you know how him and Errol had that like how they were supposed to fight and and uh, and uh, Keith Thurman never gave him the opportunity. I just think they're they're basically already setting it up for. No, more likely that's you know, what's going to happen. Up for, fact, for, you know, if if Errol Spence beats Ugas, where then they sure going to be the favorite, then that's the fight they're going to do. Which is it, 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 uh, you know, it's not a bad fight. I think it's a good fight. I think it, it, again, it, it leaves Crawford. It leaves Crawford without an, uh, a legit opponent. Well, Everybody is, knows the fight to make is Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford. I don't know why we well, keep Crawford going around it with, with PBC in order to get those fights. And I don't know if he's doing it or or if he wants to do it, but he needs to do something like that, or else he won't get those fights. 
Yeah, he definitely should sign with PBC. I don't. There's nothing else really for him. Eddie Hearn came out and said that that he's had talks with Terrence Crawford, but he just doesn't know if he could pay him what Terrence Crawford would want. Exactly. The only fight basically that for Ter- Terrence Crawford is Errol Spence. Like none of the other fights really pay him the huge amount of. But him and Errol Spence is a huge fight. They need to make that like. But again, we're probably going to get Errol Spence if he if he has to beat Ugas first. But if he beats Ugas, we're going to get him versus Keith Thurman, and then he's probably going to go up and weight. You know, we're never going to see that fight. Um, but that did it for that card. Then we move over. No, to- we also don't. Let's congratulate Fernando Vargas Jr. He looked good. Oh yeah, not- yeah, we had a, a Fernando Vargas Jr. and Amado. Amado was supposed to be fighting. Um, they didn't uh, get him an opponent, or something happened with the opponent that he had that he didn't end up fighting. But again, Fernando Vargas Jr. comes in and gets a third round knockout. I think he goes to five and zero, oh, five knockouts now. Yes. Um, yeah, he fought a guy. Actually, he fought a guy that they said he went to high school or not to high school. He was in school with when they were like young. He's from Ventura. You know, Papas went was. Well, he's from Oxnard. Trains in Ventura. Oh, okay, okay. So he's from Oxnard. Went to school with Papas when they were younger, and then uh, you know they end up fighting. It's pretty crazy. I never heard of. I never heard of something like that. Yeah, um, yeah I guess the third round KO. Um, again, Amado was supposed to be on the undercard too, but he didn't end up fighting. So you know, big shout out to Fernando and and all them. Sure. Then we move over to the DAZN. The DAZN um, card in Phoenix, Arizona. Originally, the card was supposed to be um, Jesse Vargas versus Liam Smith. Co-main event was Cuadras versus Sri Sake Sorung Visay. And Bam was supposed to be on the undercard fighting, I forget his name, Fernando Diaz right here from Riverside. But to start it off, Jesse Vargas, Liam Smith gets canceled. I don't remember exactly why. That, that's not COVID. 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 That fight will actually be uh, uh, April 30th now in the undercard of Kaylee Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. Then they bump up Cuadras and, and Sorung Visay to main event. Again, Bam is supposed to be the co-main event. So Ring, Sorung Visay pulls out, you know, a week before the fight, six days before the fight. On on, um, on Sunday before before the fight, you get a call to see if, you know, Bam wanted to step in. You know, Bam, Bam was going to fight at 112 pounds for this fight. Um, 10, 10. It was 10, 110. 110. 110. For this fight, he he has been wanting and 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 waiting for for a title fight at 108 pounds. Um, so he is a 108 pounder. He wants a world title fight at that weight, but you know he hasn't been able to get it. He's had a last year last year a fight canceled, and he gets the call to move up to 115 pounds against a former world champ who has fought everybody. Him, Gallo Estrada, Soaring Vice, and Chupilatito have been world champs or around the championship level for. 10 plus year, 10 years probably seems like. Um, and again, Bam steps in late, late, late minute replacement with six days notice. What a lot of people don't understand when that happens is that all the sparring is already done. All the hard training is already done. There's nothing basically that we could do, go, go do like to make sure he's in, in better shape than, you know, like everything is done. The week of the fight is basically just relax, cut weight, um, stay loose. And that's it. There's no more conditioning stuff going on, nothing. And he steps in and beats Cuadras by unanimous decision, drops him in the third round in a fight where Cuadras was in tremendous shape, strong dude, took took some big punches. Again, got dropped in the third round, got up and closed that round itself strong. But Bam comes out with the with the win. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the fight itself. You know, when, when I got the call on, on Sunday, it was more kind of like a – I, I don't know. They kind of told me like like a joke, like like coach is. Um, Are you guys crazy enough? No, is, 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 is Bam crazy enough to 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 fight Cuadras? And I asked, you know, what happened to his opponent? And they're like, he's sick. He's sick and he's pulling out of the cart. So we're, you know, we're in trouble. Uh, and then I said, so you guys are you guys are, are willing to do it? They're like, yeah, we were. That's what we're asking you. Like 100 percent. Make it happen. Don't you have to talk to Bam? No, I don't. Just make it happen. I'm going to call him and I'm going to tell him. But I know they're going to say yes. So I called his dad first. You know, I always call uh, uh, Jesse, his dad. And I told him, look, Jesse, this is what's going on. What do you think? Um, I want you to be the one that calls uh, Bam. So Jesse tells me, hell yeah, let's do it. You know, that's that's what we went for. No hesitation. Even though we said, you know, we're moving up two divisions against, you know, uh, uh, a true warrior in sport. But uh, the dad says, no, I know, I know my son. So let's, he's been wanting this. So let's, let's do it. So he calls him and didn't call him to see if he wanted the fight. I guess he comes and said, you're fighting. Well, that's, called him and told him you're fighting. And, and that's all it took. You know, that's all it took. Come Monday, we're in the gym and uh, we're all excited. We're all, you know, it's like, like you said, it's not like we had a training camp. Oh, let's get ready for this now and do this and do that. You know, good thing Quadras was, was getting ready for a lefty also. 
And good thing Josh was fighting our guys like Ronnie Rios, uh, sparring, sparring, uh, sparring, uh, what's his name, uh, Cardenas, the, yeah, you know, right, that Mexican style, you know, brawlers. So, so we had good training camp too, you know, getting ready for another fight, but still turned out to be good. Uh, Cuadras was getting ready for a lefty also. So, so nothing it's perfect. So it's not like they would have done anything different anyways. You know, they were, you know, we would spar the same guys. Fathers would probably spar the same guys because they were lefty. So we um, we we took the fight uh, right there at that moment. My dad was there. My dad, my, that's the first thing my dad says. Remember when Fernando fought Yorde with Campas? He was 14 and all also. He was very young. Fernando was 21. Bam uh, just turned 22. Bam just turned 22 two weeks ago. Yeah. So very similar, you know, fighting the veteran, the experienced nice, fighter. Nice. We're like, oh, you cow, you're right. Uh, Bam went that same night to see the he, you know, he looked he looked up the fight and seen it, and I guess that gave him a lot more motivation. And after that, we just I don't I don't think they picked it up from my dad because my dad just told us. Now they were bringing it up a lot, the zone and, and the you know, right now. They there's, there's, it even, up. there's even posts of you know of my dad and Person. me and my dad, you know, with Fernando, you know, the stats, you know, 14 0 uh, never been passed. Fernando never been past six rounds. Bam never been past eight rounds so everything was very similar like and, and you know history repeats itself yeah, that. that's the caption of the, of, the, of the post i want to give that the, the person a shout out because they did a nice nice yeah, post about it, it. it that's... said um history repeats itself it yes. was boxing with b and uh they put uh, crazy how history can repeat itself first title shot fernando 21 bam 22 both of them 14 and 0 fernando had never been past the sixth round, Bam had never been past the eighth round. The opponent, again, Yori Boy Campa, 72 and two. Bam's opponent, Carlos Cuadras, 39 and four. And, you know, trainers, Eduardo Garcia, and then obviously you for, for, for yeah, Bam. no, that's crazy, man. That, that's something that, that, that may, may, makes us feel great, man. It, it's, 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 and then crazy. The, other, the other, the other crazy thing about it is on Tuesday, I believe it was exactly 10 years ago that you met Bam. He was at yes. the open workout. If, that was if another crazy thing. At Garcia yeah. Boxing on Instagram. You can see the video of Bam going up in the ring with Nonito Dornero. You were in San Antonio with Nonito for an open workout when he was going to fight with Alfredo Vasquez Jr. With Alfredo Vasquez. And uh, Nonito calls up Bam. You're right there in the ring rolling up Nonito's hand wraps. And he, he does a little bit of mid work. And then at the end, Nonito says, this kid's going to be good. And he goes out and exactly, almost exactly 10 years later, Bam gets his get, Bam gets his uh, his title fight. So the way everything worked out was a little crazy. But talk to us it's about good. the fight itself because. Again, Bam dropped him in the third round, but it was a dangerous fight the whole time. It was, you know, Cuadras was was in it the whole time. We could hear how strong his punches were. And again, it being Bam's first world title, he had never been past eight rounds. You know, there's a moment where, we, where I don't know if, like, I don't believe Bam was ever really too tired in the fight. But you could tell every time you come, when the fighters come back to the round, when they're using, they, Bam had to use a lot of energy every single round. He had to basically be perfect. And after the fight, when, when reporters would ask him, like, how are you feeling? Um, when they went into the locker room, Bam's like, I'm not going to lie. I'm sore and I'm fucking tired. They would ask him, like, obviously asking him about how do you feel about winning the world title? He would tell him, look, I'm sore and I'm so tired. Um, he, his first time in that, in that moment, there's obviously going to be the, the butterflies, the, the not nerves, the excitement. And, but he, he, he didn't fight like a 22 year old. He looked like a, like a veteran in there, went all 12 rounds. Fernando was actually stopped. Yori Boy Campas in like the seventh round. So he didn't have to go the full 12 rounds with them. Bam went the full 12 rounds and, you know, won at least, you know, eight, nine rounds out of, out of the whole fight. So talk to us about the fight itself. Well, it was it was a tough fight, man. You know, Quadras, Quadras came prepared. He was in shape. He, you know, you could tell in the wins, his body was ripped. And, uh, and see, he, he had the confidence in himself. He's a veteran. He's uh, the experienced fighter. So, so... You know that you know going in against a 22 year old, a 14 fights, so that also gave him motivation. That's why he kept trying, kept trying, even though even though Bam was you know dominating with with a jab, a counter punching, and then even dropped him in the third. Quadras never gave up. Uh, we 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 uh, we knew uh, Quadras was going to be tough, so we always we always kept motivating him. You know, keep fighting smart. You know, there was a few few rounds where where Bam tried to stand in front of him, and that was that was a danger. That was the dangerous part, you know, fighting somebody like Quadras. When we told him before the fight, you know, he did it a few times, which is something normal. Also, fighters also want to give themselves a little, a little shot, but we kept reminding him, don't do it. And you know, he didn't do. He, he did it only a few times, and yeah, he did get hit a few times. Maybe those are the rounds that that he lost because he tried to stand in front of Quadras and block and counter. But you know, it was tough. You know, but Ben listened. He he did what we told him. He 
looked sensational. I think that was a great performance. I think, you know, from what we're getting from, from uh, people from all over the world, media all over the world, telling us how great he looked. I think it was it was it was a great great performance, you know, and, and he, you know, going all twelve fun. rounds also helped. You know, this fight is gonna make him such a better fighter because he had never gone past eight rounds, and 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 even when he went eight, it wasn't that tough. So now going twelve against a against a veteran like Quada, this is gonna make him so much better. After the fight, you know, he jumps in the ropes and everything. But he was so tired that when we, we got him to the to the corner to take off his gloves, he actually wanted to sit down. He, you know, he asked for the stool. I told him, don't sit, you know, because I don't like, you know, I, I just thought it's not going to look too good. If you, you know, you won, but you're sitting down. So he did not, but he did ask for the stool and he wanted to sit down because he was just too tired. Uh, the, he says his body was sore, tired, hurting, and, uh, you know, wanted to, wanted to rest. But, uh, but yeah, great experience. Great being in, in the ring with sharing the ring with with Quadras and 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 that's gonna you know it's gonna help him so much it's gonna make him so much better now. Yeah, again, like I said, it was his first first title fight, first time being in that 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 situation where you're the main event, you're you know you're fighting a a veteran like that, a, a former world champ. There has to be nerves and stuff. By the time the next yeah, fight, being the main event, fight. you know, most of the fights he he fought a few times. On on early on the ESPN early and the oh, during the pandemic yeah. where there was no people when he's fighting Texas on Mikey's cards or stuff like that it's been with uh, yeah. he's one of the first fights so nobody's there uh, you, you know what I mean it's he's a never stage. been it's a the main country. event the crowd is there is there to watch his fight and it was a nice crowd so they're there for the main event they're there to see this fight and most and most of the people were were against them they were going for yeah, saw so that. He, he was able to fucking, you know, perform and, and that didn't get to him. He, I reminded him all the time, you know, before the fight, don't let the crowd get to you because there's going to be a crowd for, for Quadras. You know, don't, don't try to please them. Don't try to, you know, if they're, you know, Quadras himself is probably going to tell you this fight, you know, stand in front of me. Just keep listening to us. He did it a, a couple rounds, two, three rounds, and maybe those are the rounds that he lost. But, uh, but besides that, I think it was a great performance. I think he looked sensational. That 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 pivot and 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 when he dropped him in the third round was uh, beautiful, beautiful. You know, yes, a lot of people, you know, like you said, you know, a lot of people have told us, you know, that's a Mexican Loma. Well, you know, yeah, I, I understand. He, you know, Bam loves Loma. Bam says he's been watching Loma. You know, Nonito has been his favorite fighter, but watching Loma now being active and and the way the food sounds like that, him. Bam, bam, you know, bam wants to do stuff like that, which is great. Why wouldn't I want to have a, my, you know, my Mexican Loma, like they said. But, uh, but you know, Loma didn't pass the test his first title fight. Loma was a two, two-time gold medalist, much more experienced. Loma was like, what, 25, 26, or I don't even know his, his age. He and he, still, he lost to Salido. He didn't pass his first test. Bam did what he had to do. Yeah, there was a, there was a, I saw on, on on Twitter some some of the guys that, that that were talking about the fight where they keep comparing Bam to Loma, but when Loma started getting hit with with the low blows by um by Salido, he didn't know how to react. Um, and Bam got hit with one and boom, gave it right back to him. So basically, told me, hey, calm the fuck down. You know, I'm I'm you know I'm not gonna let you I'm not gonna let you punk me. Um, well, that's, you know exactly. That's what you know. That's the experience that, that that we bring to him. You know, we've you know we tell him to be clean, but he also knows that fuck, man, if he's doing it to me, fuck, fight. he won't want to. You know what I mean? So, so you know, that's one thing that Loma didn't have. And with all the experience with 400 amateur fights or, you know, two temple medals, he lost his first title fight. Yeah. With with Bam going into the fight, the way he stepped in, the way he stepped up, you know, the weight classes and against the opponent he stepped in with, he didn't get a, a you know, an easy first, first, first title fight. It brought a lot of attention from, from media, from, from just the boxing world, because before the fight, there were so many, so many uh, bo- uh, other other current fighters giving Bam, you know, sending Bam Bam good luck, wishing him luck, talking about the fight, reporters, and it, it just became like a, like a big deal that that somebody steps up like that, you know, especially in today's age, and I mean today's uh, uh, a boxing where, you know, guys, young guys are are, are you know fighting easier opposition. Um, even even older world champs and stuff, maybe not fighting the the best guys, not taking the biggest risks. Um, so it, it 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 drew a lot of attention from people. But after the fight, when he won, you're not you don't check Twitter like 
you'll get on it and stuff, but you don't check Twitter the way the way I, I manage your, your your Twitter account and check up on it. I'll show you when people will send you messages and, and stuff like that. But you're not on it as much as as as, as you know as I am and, and, and looking at people. But the, the the reaction that Bam got, not just from it was former fighters. It was other pro- people from other promotional companies. It was uh, it was reporters. It was just everyone. Uh, the mayor of San Antonio giving him a shout out. You got fighters. If you go on Bam's Instagram post and on his Twitter, you got Shakur Stevenson telling him, you know, uh, the youngest world champion boxing, great job. You got uh, Jared Anderson, the heavyweight from top rank. You got Jerron Ennis commenting commenting on his Instagram. Errol Spence saying a uh, 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 shout out to the to my uh, to the Texas boy 210 Bam this is just the beginning you're the future you got Chocolatito calling him the future of boxing calling him his taken brother you got just on and on and on Jojo Diaz Ryan Garcia said you know Bam Garcia uh, Bam Rodriguez is a beast um just non-stop and then people from other promotionals Christine you got Christina Poncher Bruce Trampler from top rank you just got non-stop non-stop you know messages and and, and stuff about about bam and and i think getting her his instagram post he just took he took a selfie with bam in the locker room took a picture with them and he put a star is born that was like again i don't re- remember seeing a, a reaction like that where where usually you get fights where there's some people that are with you or some people that are that are like um that are giving you props some people are hating some it was just all around just nothing but 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 good comments about about bam um, I don't know how you, like, how many phone calls you. And, and, that's, and that's, 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 that's on, on, on social me. media. All the calls and, and text messages that, that I got, you know, uh, this weekend, it was insane also, you know, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, of text messages and, and calls from different, bo- you know, from boxing people all over the world. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting them from all over too. You know, that that's great. You know, like you managers, said, managers trying to sign him. I'm getting a lot of that, you know. Uh, you <laughs> you know, gotta chill out. It's 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 a great it's 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 great, you know that that we have, you know, this type of fighters like this, you know that that uh start from the beginning with us, you know. You see the picture ten years ago, they were kids, and you know, then we brought in Josh. Uh, Bam started coming at fifteen, like 15 you know. Years old. You know what I mean? Still fighting amateurs, and you know, turning turning him pro at seventeen in Mexico City. Uh, he actually with, got stunned. That's his. Or, he a tough that's been his toughest fight. fight. He said. Well, besides now, so, this one obviously takes that one. But when they asked him on the zone, what was your toughest fight? He said, "My pro debut is like in Mexico City." Bam got stunned in that fight and everything. So he yeah, had to go no, through. It was it was insane, man. So so you know, starting like that, that, that doesn't have a price, man. You know, uh, sometimes a lot of uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people see it differently. A lot of business people see it differently. Oh man, you're making a mistake. You should you should go with that one, this one instead because he's gonna make you he's gonna make millions and millions of dollars. You talked about that one and for me. It's more about the kids that started with me, the ones that that have been there with me that are you know that that I feel need the help more than any than the other one, and that's why I'm making my decisions. I I am very happy for 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 being you know having the team that I have, the fighters that I have, because uh, it's not just me. You know if if you know. The same day, we were going to split it up to three different locations. Actually, four, because we also had an amateur tournament. amateur tournament. We were going to, and we were going to do it. Jose Ramirez was going to fight that same day. Josito Lopez was going to fight that same day. Yeah, Bam man. was going to fight the same day. And the amateur tournament is going on. The, uh, yeah. the, the silver gloves are going on also. And we had four four national title uh, kids fighting the That's, national. Okay, so on the Jose Ramirez card, that one was in Fresno. You had Jose plus six guys on the undercard. You right. had Josecito on a card in Vegas. You got you had Bam on the undercard in, in, in Phoenix originally. And we had four amateurs that made it to the Nationals in Silver Gloves. A shout out to the to, to Andrew Coria, Aiden Herrera, Andrew Herrera, and AJ Herrera. Three of them got gold, one silver. But we were, we were all four trainers. You, me, Chepe, and Art were all going to be sl- split up for the day. We were going to split up. My dad was going to help us out also. So we were going to do it, you know, and, and so, so why, so, so why was Josito, when we do all the training, we do all the, all the, uh, all the camp together and we're in shape and we all agree that this is the way it's going to work. If I'm going with so-and-so and you're going with so-and-so, my dad also helps out with, 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 so wherever I need them, you know, they were all okay. They knew it was coming. They knew it was going to happen and they were okay. Nobody said anything. 
they were all okay with it, you know. So you know that, that, that's that's that, that's the beauty of it, you know, the team that we have. I don't, I, you know, it, I can't, I, I wouldn't be able to do it myself. I have a team, and the fighters believe in everybody, all the coaches that we have. So that, I'm just blessed, you know, that we have, you know, you know, you don't, have, there's no price for this type of fights, this type of moments right here, at all. And, and no, the, way, no the way it worked out, how all the fights got canceled, Jose, Jose's card got moved to to March. Josecito got injured, which obviously it's stuff that we wouldn't have wanted to happen. No, but then the way Josecito would have been come out with a good win, you know, if, if it's lost. Lost. Yeah, lost. so maybe it was, it was Josito's moment to come out with a good win, but it happens, you know, we just could, he, the injury was, was severe enough where we had to cancel. Yeah, and then the week of the fight, the week of Bam's fight, where we had already all agreed, okay, we're all going to Bam's fight now, like even if it was he was on the undercard, or whatever, then it gets bumped to the main event. Everybody right away, we had, um, Mikey, uh, uh, Gigi's family from, from San Antonio. You had just we had a lot of, we had some Oxnard, just people from all over the place just said, hey, we're there, we're there, we're going. So it was, it was, it was perfect the way it works out. But again, post-fight, Bam, Bam gets the win. Again, I'm telling you all the, all the stuff on social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, everything. Just a, a great reaction to, to, to his win. Everybody seems to be uh, together on, 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 you know, everybody just giving him his props and, and you know, Good, nothing but good messages and stuff. But now that he is the world champ at 115 pounds, what's what's the plan? Because during the week, again, Bam, not you know, it, his first first time being in that in that moment, and and you know, you guys told him after he he was talking a lot about how if he wins the title, he would probably vacate and go back down and wait. But when he when he did the interview, he said he felt really good at 115 pounds. He said I would be willing to stay here, but then again, if I get a chance at 108, 112, I would also like to go back down to become world champ at those weight classes. So if 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 the what is the perfect scenario for you for Bam? Would would it be a, a world title fight at lower weight class? Would it be maybe defending this one, maybe unifying, maybe 112, 108? What what would be the perfect situation for you? Well, the perfect situation for us would be if we could get any of the one weight pound champions to give us a uh, direct title opportunity. We're not going to go back to one way to try to get a title fight. You know, has to be a title it, fight. it has to be directly for a title fight. And any of the, of the champions, any of the four or five champions, you know, right now, any of the five champions we're willing to go and, and, and fight them if we go directly into, into that fight or one twelve also one twelve is also another division that we don't, you know, cause you know, bam fight and became champion at one fifteen. But he could do one weight. He could do make one weight. He could fight at one weight uh, with no problem. But like I said, if it's a direct no, but I'm saying, but if, but if it was like the perfect situation for you, where yes, he got a title fight. I bring him the back perfect to situation would be a title at 108, and then we move him up to 112. And I think I think 112 would actually be his best weight class because I think at 108 he's gonna make it maybe one. He could probably make it two times, you know, this year. But he's getting bigger. Um, 112 is a weight class where he's going to cut a little bit of weight, but I think that's going to be a perfect weight class for him where I think he could stay there and become one of these undisputed world champs at a weight class or, 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 you know, dominate a weight class for, for, for a few fights. I think 112 would be the perfect, the perfect weight class for him. And then eventually come back to 150. But he's also, you know, but he's also, he's also a world champion now at 115. So like, like Eddie Hunt said at, at, at our locker room, he said, he, he, cause you know, I was joking around with him and told him, you know, we want to go to England and fight somewhere in, yeah. in, in the UK. Cause it would be really nice. I asked him, do you have any, any 115 pounders in the UK? And he says, no, I want to do, I want to do uh guy yeah, versus, uh, versus Bam in San Antonio, Texas. So, so, you know, there's still those big opportunities also for, for Bam, but you know, I also don't want to, you know, the WBA, the WBA forced, you know, that the winner of Chocolatito and, and Gallo have to fight Joshua Franco. Franco. Franco's the, the mandatory. Exactly. So Josh, I mean, uh, I mean, Chocolatito. He's not fighting. fighting. He's not huh? fighting Gallo. He's not the champ. Chocolatito's exactly. not the champ. But he's Gallo fighting, but he's fighting, but he's fighting yeah. Ray. Ray. So now, now uh, Gallo doesn't have a fight. Doesn't have an opponent. So Joshua why don't, why doesn't the, that's what we're saying. No, that's what, I don't know why they are not saying. Now, Sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Eddie Hearn. But the fight that needs to happen is, is uh, Gallo versus versus Franco. It's a good, really good fight. The mandatory. It's a great fight. It's a mandatory they need to make. So that's a fight that needs to, that, that needs to happen. You know, I, I want Josh to get that fight before, before his brother. I want Josh to get that fight. 
and you know, and then move on. Yeah, then then maybe yeah, we could fight. You know, whatever happens, you know. But I, you know, that's the fight that needs to happen. We can't just skip Josh and and, and you know, promoters can't just do that. Why? Because they got the power to tell the WBA, oh, just just forget about the fight. No, the WBA has to do their fucking, you know, what they say. You know, they have to do. They call it from mandatory, so make it happen. Don't 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 let anybody convince you to say, oh, we could do this one be before. No, you, you're doing Chocolatito versus, versus Ray because 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 Gallo got, in, got hurt or he got sick. Because Gallo got sick. So, that's, what, to fight now so yes, to that's a good reason. Chocolatito doesn't want to lose that opportunity. So yeah, let's bring him in another fight. But Gallo needs to fight Joshua Franco. He needs to. Chocolatito is fighting Ray in March, beginning of March. If Gallo was ready by, let's say, late April, Chocolatito's not going to fight him. He's ready by He's early May. <laughs> Chocolatito and, and, and Ray are not going to be ready right away. Joshua Franco gets it, and then they fight the winner of Chocolatito and Ray. Like, exactly. it's, it's just, it's just, you know, it just all makes perfect sense. It's just the way the way the way they called it, you know, we should be called the mandatory, making it, you know, a mandatory. That's the way that's the way it should be. But you know, uh, hopefully it does happen. Hopefully they they get Eddie to Hearn see did say, reality. Eddie Hearn did come into the locker room. And he said he would like to make Gallo Estrada versus versus Bam. But we were in the lock. We were on the locker room. Josh is right there, and and we said. What do you mean? Josh is his mandatory. We're like, you maybe that. But he doesn't mandatory. have Josh, so that's why. Exactly. So that sounds like a good plan to so use. This, this is where Josh's manager and, uh, and promoter Baltimore. have stepped in and say, no, there's no way we're going to allow that. This is the fight that needs to happen. Imagine in San Antonio with Bam on the undercard. That's just Bam that. versus Kyoguchi, co main event to exactly. Joshua Frank Franco versus Gallo Estrada. Make it happen to zone Eddie Hearn, Golden Boy. Whatever, whatever it takes, it's gonna. That's the perfect card in San Antonio. Um, yeah, but Golden Boy and 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 and, and Rich should not allow WBA to to do that. They need to force that fight. They yeah, need to do to, it. It has to happen next. Again, Bam Rodriguez, the 14th world champ out of out of, out of RGBA, stepped up last minute, and since then has gotten nothing. But I'm telling you, his social media following. I think he went up like 20,000 followers already on Instagram. Nothing but 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 great comments and and uh, you're 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 a good trainer again. You know, hmm. uh, we had we had some losses last year where you were probably the worst trainer in boxing and you know getting messages about uh everybody should leave your camp and stuff like that and go with with another camp and uh, now today or this weekend you became a good trainer again so don't worry you're <laughs> Look, back this back is, everybody's this good. What makes, this is what makes us feel so good, you know. Fighters, fighters that, you know, I also have those too, you know, fighters that come to me already as world champions. Yeah. You know, I've had those, you know, it's happened to me. And, and, and yes, we take them. Of course, we fall in love with them. Jose, you know, fuck, man, that kid is the best person to be around, Jose Ramirez. He's a great person, great champion, great warrior, you know. And then, but, but you also, you know, you, it's something I could special. be one of those that only gets those type of fighters. I could be one of those that only gets those, those, those fighters and wait for them and, and don't have that much fighters. But, you know, because I'm just waiting for those big names, big paydays. I, I, I enjoy looking at the amateurs. I enjoy bringing Cardenas from Michoacan, you know, uh, and, 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 and turning them pro and stuff like that. You know, I, I enjoy that because, you know, that's what, you know, bringing them from, from the amateurs to the pros and, and developing them. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of headaches also. Uh, but I love it. I, that's what, I, I love that better, you know. Or that one fighter that is coming off a loss and, you know, very pretty, 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 a pretty disappointing loss where, where nobody even gives them a shot anymore. Everybody's already, already uh, you know, calling them off. And then we prepare them and become world champion. You know, the, 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 the Abner Midas type of wins that I've had, the Brian Villoria type of wins that I've had, and, and, and the other ones that, you know, that, that I could mention, you know, uh, Luevano going to England against Cook, and nobody gave him a chance, and goes and knocks him out in the 11th round. You know, th those, are, those, are, those are great feelings. When you get a call from, from Contursi telling me that Maidana wants, wants another shot, and I'm thinking Maidana's going to retire because that's what we're hearing. But then we we'll bring him back, and he gets one of the big, one of the biggest upsets in boxing. You know, still one of, probably a lot of people's best best uh, you know upset. Most memorable uh, upset when he beat when he beat uh, 
when he beat uh, Omzama. Broner. It's Broner, exactly. So, you know, those, those Abner Myers, you know. There's just like something that. special about certain. That's special. Certain wins. And with Bam, you know, like you said, we've known him since, well, you met him that day and took a picture with him. But, you know, he was 15 years old coming to camp and stuff. He turned pro at 17. <laughs> At 17 with us, excuse me, turned pro at 17 in Mexico City, um, and five less than five years later, he's he's world champ. There's something special about those two, or the way Josh became world champion. He's a big underdog, and you know, there's just there's just something special about 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 wins that make them a little bit different than 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 other ones. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was it it was a big a, a big win for, for for the team, and you know, the, I'm telling you, the reaction you've gotten on social media is insane. So it's insane. It's great. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep you guys posted on any news we get on, on Bam's, you know, potential next fight because he just recently signed a deal with Matchroom uh, a week before or a few days before he signed his, his new deal with Matchroom. Obviously, with getting the World Title fight, it renews like a lot of stuff and there had to be a lot of stuff stuff uh, changed in his in his contract and stuff. But um, he should be staying busy this year. Hopefully he gets, you know, three, four fights, um, three or four fights. Um, but like we said, after the fight, he was a little, you know, a little tired. He's going to be sore. He's going to take a little, you know, a few weeks off. But uh, hopefully we get him back in there soon, and we get him in a in, you know in a title fight. I want to wait once over. Maybe he defends you know his belt at 115 pounds. But we'll keep you guys posted. Um, we'll be back again next week. Um, we'll be back again next week. Like I said, there there's been a lot of there's been a lot of talk about Shakur Stevenson Valdez getting finalized already this week about maybe Canelo announcing his next opponent. So we'll, we'll be getting into that. Um, but again, thank you guys for tuning in. That does it for this for this episode. We'll see you guys uh, soon. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, guys.